Welcome back to another episode of Shore Solutions, the podcast. So on this episode of the podcast, you have me, Mara Shore, one of the partners here at Shore Solutions. And with me, I have Dr. Jonathan Kaplan. And although Dr. Kaplan is just an incredible wealth of knowledge, he is a board certified plastic surgeon based out in the Bay Area in California. We are going to be mostly talking today about his role as founder of Build My Health. You may have known them as Build My Bod as they have been well established in the industry, but they are now going through a rebrand. And we were just talking that basically the, the name is catching up with all the amazing things that they've been doing for so long. So welcome, Dr. Kaplan. Thanks so much for having me. Great intro. Yeah, there we go. Right. It's it's like we've met before or <laughs> just over the times. past decade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, we uh, we actually were chatting before and there's a couple things that we're really going to focus on today. And so that's where I'm going to look here. Now, can you give us for anybody that may not be familiar, can you give us the 30 second or so elevator pitch about what exactly Build My Health is so that as we're talking about it, people have a better understanding of exactly what we're talking about. Absolutely. So again, I'm a board certified plastic surgeon from Louisiana. And I had this idea back when I first started practice in Louisiana that patients were always calling asking about pricing. And back then I did cosmetics and reconstructive procedures. So people were calling about their out of pocket cost after their insurance was applied to their reconstructive procedures, but they're also asking about their out of pocket cost for cosmetic procedures. And I said, you know, there had to be a solution online where people could go check pricing ahead of time. There was not a solution. So we developed our own uh, platform called Build My Bot at the time, which was focused mostly on aesthetics or at least in the plastic surgery industry. And now we've expanded out to uh, not just plastics or, but, or derm, but bariatric surgery, hospitals, surgery centers, uh, aesthetic cash pay services, but also reconstructive uh, medically necessary services. And so consumers are able to use our price estimators and our chat bot, which we embed on a doctor's website. So when they go to that doctor's website or surgery center's website, they can check their pricing for the services they need, uh, specifically their, their cash price, or they can check, you know, put in their insurance information and see what their out-of-pocket expense will be after the insurance applies, you know, the co-insurance, the deductibles, out-of-pocket maximums and things like that. So now we're just all about price transparency, but the key differentiator is that when the consumer checks pricing, they have to first put in their contact information. So the doctor, surgery center, hospital, radiology facility, whoever generates a lead in return. So they can find out who that consumer is and then follow up with them and say, hey, how can we help you? you wanna come in for a consultation? What additional questions you have? Um, and so the consumer gets what they want, the out-of-pocket cost to them, which is what they're most concerned about. And the provider gets a uh, follow-up information for a, a lead uh, to, to call them to check in to see how they can help. And anyone that's ever listened to this podcast before knows we are all about follow-up. We are all about lead gen. We are all about how to really maximize that patient experience. So this is, we've honestly, we've been fans here at Shore Solutions of both Dr. Kaplan and Build My Health for, for quite some time. We have several clients using your platforms. And so one of the things I wanted to chat with you about, and I know, again, I have my, I have a couple things on my list here Great. because we want to make the most time of our, our time here. So knowing that with Build My Bod, you have really, you're able to see these really great, big, beautiful, robust, overarching themes because you have data from practices across the United States. So, um, right. and are there, is there data in Canada as well, or is it just the U.S.? There is. We do have a few doctors in Canada. So we, uh, since we have doctors in Canada, we definitely have data from there as well. Um, Perfect. And, and that's the thing is, I mean, people would say, oh, well, I'll just list my prices on my website as a static web page, And that's one thing you can do, but if you do that, you're not going to capture any leads in the process. So that's one of the things our price estimator does is it allows the consumer to check pricing, but only after they put in their contact information, like I said. But the other differentiator is that because we have all of these doctors who are uploading their pricing to our database, there's so much data that the doctors now have access to or the med spa has access to. So they can log into the provider portal and they can look at the procedures they've uploaded, you know, breast, dog, injectables, whatever, and they can see how their prices compare across the country, across the region, the state, 15 mile radius and zip code. So they can decide, you know, well, I don't necessarily want to be the least expensive. 
And so they can adjust their pricing so that they know where they fit within that competitive landscape. And so that's one of the huge things about being a part of this is that we all get to share in all this great data. So let's dig a little deeper when it comes to the data. What are you seeing? We are, so when we're recording this, we're about halfway through October. So we are, you know, we're, we're into Q3 or Q, I'm sorry, Q4. We're into Q4 at this point, obviously. But let's talk about Q4. What are you seeing as far as trends are concerned? And that, because somebody that is focused on what's going on in their practice or in their city and their zip code, they may not know what is going on one zip code over. They may not know, are my competitors experiencing the same, you know, the same burst of patients, the same surge? Are they experiencing the slow time? Are they experiencing more injectables, surgical versus non-surgical, et cetera? So what's going on in different parts of the country? What can you give us from an insider's perspective when it comes to Q4? Yeah, that's the thing is that- Q4. Yeah, even if you reached out to those other doctors that are those other practices, they wouldn't tell you the truth anyway. That's very um, true. Yes, everyone's so, doing wonderful all the time. Exactly, exactly. Except me, you know, everybody feels like it's always that they aren't doing well. But anyway, so uh, when when if somebody logs in, they can see their the trend over the last 12 months for themselves and for the whole network. And so because all these different doctors, we have over 250 uh, doctors or practices or facilities using our platform now. So you can see the number of leads coming in. And, I, I, and so I, I focus on leads, but obviously the other big benefit of allowing the consumer to check pricing on your website is that it also helps weed out price shoppers and weed in uh, serious patients. But from a lead perspective, you can see how many leads are coming in each month across the entire network. So you can see that everything was going up and up and up and up on that line graph when you look in the provider portal during you know February, March, April, May, June, July of 2021. And then you can see that everybody started to slow down in the number of leads they were generating in August and September. And now things are picking back up um, towards the end of uh, towards the end of September, beginning of October. So that's really a, the other benefit is that misery loves company sometimes. You can see that it's not just you that's maybe generating fewer leads and maybe you're still busy operating, but those are patients you booked a month ago. Uh, so you can, and you maybe you're feeling, oh, there's fewer consults, but you can look at, at all the data in the back end of the platform and see that everybody is really experiencing that on average. And you can see that the leads are going down, but then they're starting to go back up. So Q4, like it does in most years, is going to continue to improve because everybody's going back and getting scheduled for surgery because they want to get procedures done. Thanksgiving, Christmas, that used to be more true because people were you know, off during Thanksgiving and Christmas, they had time off. And now more people are working from home, but we're still seeing that pe people are choosing to get those procedures during Thanksgiving and Christmas, even though they're working from home and it's not a matter of really taking off of work. So what's interesting is that you mentioned, obviously one of the other things we were talking about is that in, you were mentioning the shift in trends, right? So not just necessarily the shift in trends in the in our industry, in the aesthetic cosmetic and plastic surgery space, but just how, shifts and trends that are going on in the rest of the world are affecting what's going on in practices. So one of the things that we were talking about was obviously we, we can't ignore the elephant in the room of the Delta variant. And mm -hmm. so there is Delta variant and how are you seeing that affect practices at this point, knowing that it's not, um, it's not brand new anymore. Right. So we have a, a little bit of a better grasp. And then also you had mentioned travel and, and, you know, people are able to travel again. So we have that. How are you finding those two things are affecting your practice slash the trends that you're seeing through Build My Bod? So through the data that we can see, we can again see that the trends of the lead generation, people being interested in cosmetic services specifically to this podcast, that that is trending down in August and September, just that snapshot. Now, as far as what's causing that, that maybe varies uh, from community to community. But what we saw here in August and September when everybody was going back to school and people were truly going back to school this year. So that's always a slowdown every year. But then, yes, people were maybe spending more money that they had uh, the pent up demand for travel. They were able to travel some more. It was uh, travel more easily. So that was people spending more money on travel versus cosmetic services. And then also the Delta variant people, like at least around here, were getting very nervous about that. And things really shut down. And by the way, this I've talked to like radio station that I advertise with. I talked to the radio station. They saw a significant downturn in ad dollars being spent in August and September also. 
one of the things they mentioned, and this doesn't, this is why I say it really depends on the community, is that they thought that people were focused on the governor's recall of Governor Newsom and that whether he was going to be thrown out of office and they were going to get a Republican that they didn't like. So they were thinking that that might affect it. So th that's one thing that the uh, data doesn't show us is why things are, uh, uh, there's a downturn, because again, that can change from community standard uh, from one community to the other. But the, the data is real and things definitely slow down in those months and people don't need to feel like, oh, it was only me. It was, it was most people. And again, even if you were busy operating in those months of September, of August, September, like we were, those weren't necessarily the new patients. Those people had already paid. Now, if those people were paying again the day of surgery, then it wouldn't be a problem. But they had already paid weeks, months beforehand. Now, one thing that you and I were, were also talking about is that, and, I'm, and you told me that I have a permission to talk about this, so I'm going to go ahead and, and bring sure. this up, is that in your practice, so because again, you are a practicing surgeon, right? Day in, day out, that although Correct. yes, you are a founder and you have Build My Health, you are surgeon first. I think that's probably pretty fair to say, right? Every you know, You're in the operating room. This is your, this is your baby. So within your practice, you have made the decision that not only at a, a state level, all of your team members, your staff are, you know, there was a mandatory vaccination. So for COVID-19, but you've recently made the decision to have it that all of your patients need to be vaccinated as well. So Correct. can you tell me about why, not just me, but everybody else, why you made that decision and how has that affected your practice? And then my follow-up question is also then going to be, have you seen any of your colleagues do that? And what sort of feedback have you gotten even from people in different states? Well, here in, in San Francisco in the Bay Area, right about the end of July, beginning of August, we made the decision to require all of our patients, new patients, um, existing patients that were coming back for new treatments like Botox patients, surgical patients, that we required them all to be vaccinated. And s soon after in the Bay Area, Bay Area, restaurants, if you wanted to go inside, bars, if you wanted to go inside, they were requiring vaccination too. It couldn't even be a negative test. So while this may be like crazy thing to do in other states, within the Bay Area, we were pretty well insulated to that. Um, a lot of other entities, a lot of other businesses were doing that as well. We happened to maybe uh, do it first, but we let patients know via an email newsletter and we got some interesting feedback. Uh, the reason, a couple of reasons we did it. Um, one is that, you know, before surgery, remember we have an, our in-office operating room here in our office. We don't, I don't go to a surgery center. So I have less control over if, if I was going to a surgery center to operate, I'd have less control over what they did, their policies. But here in our office, we have our own operating room and, you know, we were requiring patients to get COVID uh, tests before they came in and it had to be within a certain number of days. And it was really a hassle to make sure they got it done, to get, uh, get a COVID test in the community, to make sure they got it done within a certain number of days, you know, soon, like not two weeks before surgery. And it really became a hassle. And the fact that the Delta variant was starting to uh, raise its head back in July, I was like, you know what? We just need to require vaccination. It's way easier. Patients can just send us their QR code that they got from the state of California. And there's not this follow-up to see if like they got their test, if they got it soon enough, if we're gonna get the results before their operation, if we're gonna have to postpone their operation. So a lot of it was very practical that uh, getting the vaccination card was way easier. And so we did that. And uh, again, I don't know if that caused certain patients not to, or I'm, I know it certainly caused some patients not to come see us, but I don't know if it was like an overwhelming amount because again, things were slowing down from the uh, back to school and uh, people going to travel. But we did send out a survey um, about three weeks ago now, and we got a fair and we sent it out to our database of about 15,000 people um, and got a little over a, about 185 responses. And over 80% of the people are vaccinated, uh, under 20% are, are unvaccinated. And that was what the survey was about is, you know, if you're vaccinated uh, or not, and if you're not vaccinated, why not? And it was interesting. So, <clears throat> some of the feedback people gave us is that they weren't vaccinated because they weren't sure about, the, they were worried about the side effects or there hadn't been enough data. And then the other thing is we asked them is if you were not vaccinated, uh, what would, uh, it was start, uh, um, what would, incentivize you to get vaccinated. And some of the things were that if they, ha if they had to be vaccinated, go see their doctor, their plastic surgeon, they would do it. Or if they were traveling or if they were going to a concert, they'd get vaccinated. 
so that, that it was an interesting survey uh, results. And, you know, people would, somebody was like wondering, are you getting paid to, to require vaccination? Like, I guess they thought maybe we were being sponsored by Pfizer by requiring people to be vaccinated to come in. So it was very interesting feedback from the survey. And um, it's uh, at the end of the day, you know, people think that we're imposing our will on them, but you know, we're, we're not requiring you to go get vaccinated. You just, you don't have to go get vaccinated. You just go to see another doctor, but but we feel more comfortable knowing that the patients coming in are vaccinated. So it's safer for our other patients. It's safer for our staff and safer for our staff's family. You know, and as a side note, just a question, uh, are you fielding questions and sort of acting as a counselor or, you know, I, would, I wouldn't say coach certainly, but are you acting as a counselor if somebody does have questions about the vaccine um, and its safety as, are you getting questions about that because you you are a doctor, <laughs> first and foremost. Yeah, no, I was, uh, I'm on the radio uh, once a week uh, here in town with 99.7 now. And so we do sometimes, aside from answering questions about cosmetic services, we answer questions about COVID, about the vaccine. And with these survey results, actually, we made a five-part uh, video uh, or that was like TikTok friendly or Instagram reels friendly. And we took some of the data from the survey and I answered some of the questions about people's concerns about the vaccine. So you're exactly right. We definitely did that. We took that information from the survey, made those videos and the videos weren't made to be condescending. If you were unvaccinated, you know, like that was dumb of you. We just answered the questions as scientifically as possible. Sure. Well, let's, um, let's start wrapping up and is there anything else? And thank you so much for, for taking the time to chat today, both about Build My Health, both about, you know, and then looking at all sorts of other trends. I know that there are, there's so much going on in the world. And not only do I love as a consultant, which is our, you know, our first and foremost, our bread and butter, that's, that is, you know, what we do. We don't get paid to be podcasters. So with that, we love not only the Build My Health software for what it's able to do for our clients, what it's able to do for patients, and with the, the price transparency component, but also knowing all the other features that are involved in being able to really aid our clients in looking at the trends. And thank you so much for coming on today and adding just a little bit more depth to what's going on and, and helping to really give our listeners that really that insider scoop on what's going on and, and some trends. My, my pleasure. I think that, you know, in the past price transparency was this thing that uh, all healthcare providers shied away from, but now the federal government is requiring hospitals to show pricing as of January 1st of 2021. And so that's just going to have a trickle down effect. Consumers are going to start to be able to uh, get access to pricing. And so I, I feel like people should find a way on their terms to provide pricing to their patients through their website and not just aesthetics, as I mentioned before, you know, this is for insurance-based services too, that, you know, if, if there's the doctors out there that own a surgery center or they're, you know, part owners in a surgery center, that they can now show consumer pricing with not just their, their fee, the professional fee, but also the facility fee uh, and linking those two things together. So if somebody's interested in, you know, a breast procedure that the consumer can find out the, 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 uh, the ASC fee and the surgeon's fee rather than just getting one or the other, which would be an incomplete picture. So it's really great now that the data is out there, the software is available to make this accessible to the consumer, but in, in, and in turn generating a lead for the provider, but also offloading some of that effort from the front office staff of having to deal with the real time eligibility verification for the insurance procedures, because that all can be done through the software as well. So it's, it's, it's a great time to be alive. There's a lot of great in, in, innovation and technology out there to make the uh, providers and the consumers' lives a little bit easier. I agree. And if any of you listening or, or watching, depending on which platform, if you are curious about more information, I recommend number one, check out, we do have previous podcasts and videos that we have done with Dr. Kaplan that he gives a really great in-depth history into not just Build My Health, formerly known as Build My Bod, <laughs> but also how his rise in becoming the surgeon that he is today, why he chose to buy an existing practice instead of opening something up from scratch. I mean, there's so much more that we've talked about in the past, which is why we haven't touched on those things today. I'm but like, I an, I'm like an onion, you. Mara, lots of layers. You are, and I'm glad that you haven't made me cry. So we're good to go. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so 
Uh, but if somebody not just wants to watch those podcasts, uh, listen to the podcast, watch the videos, we'll say, Dr. Kaplan, where can they find you? Yeah, so they can definitely email me, Jonathan at buildmybod, still buildmybod.com, B-U-I-L-D-M-Y-B-O-D.com. Uh, and they can check out those videos that I was referring to as far as educating on the vaccine based on our survey results. They can check out our Instagram page, Reels in the feed, uh, um, uh, at Real Dr. Bay, R-E-A-L-D-R-B-A-E, not B-A-Y, since I'm a plastic surgeon in the San Francisco Bay Area. And they can, uh, so they can email me, they can check out our social media and um, it's very easy to reach out, just direct message or email. You can find me anytime. Perfect. And if you notice that you actually gave your actual email address so people can actually <laughs> email you. Yes. That's not, not info at buildmybot.com. Just email me directly. It's fine. We, we do the same thing. And if anybody that's ever asked for our contact information on our business cards, it's honestly, it's our cell phones. It's my, you know, it, I'm not saying Absolutely. you need to give your cell phone, but for me, it's my cell phone. It's my email. And I know people that say, oh no, I'm not going to, you can't contact me. Why? Right, exactly. <laughs> now, I call my patients. Big. I call my patients the evening after their operation and, and I call them from our, my Google voice cell phone number. And so that way they have the number that I always tell them, I was like, I'd rather you call me, text me or send me a photo rather than going online, reading some bad information or calling friends or family or God forbid, going to the ER, just reach out to me first. Uh, uh, it's way easier for both of us. Oh, I love that. That's so true. Well, thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Shore Solutions, the podcast and can't wait till we're in same time, same place all over again. Absolutely. Always a pleasure. Great seeing you, Mara.